good. Um, <coughs> the finished project, as opposed to the prototype that you turn in for the design document. So that's pretty straightforward. What I want to talk about today is creating your prototype and taking a wireframe that you have in your mind that you've sketched out and actually creating some template or, or some prototype web pages. And we're going to start by creating a template and then we're going to clone it. All right? Here's sort of the steps that I go through whenever I'm doing this. All right? Uh, what I want to talk about today mainly is the, the process of taking your wireframe and going to a prototype. And then we'll talk a little bit about taking the prototype and finishing it up. All right? Um, again, you create a prototype for all sorts of reasons. Uh, one of them is to get criticism or to get people to discuss it and tell you what's missing from it, what needs to be changed, uh, and so on. It's good if you can to create multiple prototypes because you can then show people this or that and they can look at it. Maybe they'll take aspects of each and sort of merge them together. I like the fonts on this page, but I like the color scheme of this page, for example. Or I like the way this is laid out, but I like the color scheme and fonts of this page or something like that. Okay? So the, the process we're going to follow sort of goes like this. This assumes that we have our wireframe. And again, for a small site, one wireframe might be enough. Um, maybe you'll have two wireframes, because maybe your home page looks a little different than your, the rest of your pages. For a small site, though, I really doubt you're going to have more than two. If you have more than two, then, then maybe you need to think it through a little bit more. For a larger site, now you might, you might have a, a few more. Your wireframe is going to look like this. So we're going to start out with a very simple wireframe that looks like this. This is going to be our header. It's going to be our nav section. This is going to be our content section. This is going to be a footer. And this is going to be some pattern that we're going to have in the background. So let's assume that this is the wireframe that we're going to shoot for. This is for our first version of the prototype. We're going to make several versions of the prototype. Not today necessarily, but this is the first version of the prototype that we are making. So once we have this, <coughs> we are first going to create, we're going to start to create an HTML template. What do I mean by a template? I mean, something that you can copy. All right. Let's say we have 10 pages we have to make on our website. Are we going to make each 10 different? No. We probably want them to look consistent and to act consistently. We want the navigation to be consistent, for example, on all the pages. All right. We want things to be in the same position on all the pages. So we're going to make a template that we're, that we're able to copy. All right. Now our template that we make, there's two main areas of it. There's these portions of it, which are probably going to be identical on every page. Identical or maybe close to identical on every page. Because we want the same header on the page. We don't want it to look like it's different sites when you go to it. We want the same header. We want the same navigation. And we want the same footer information. This is the area that's going to be different on every page. So our template is going to consist of some things that are going to be exactly the same on every page and some areas that are going to be different on each page. Our goal is to make our template
is to get the common areas correct. Complete. Because we're going to take this template that we design and we're going to clone it when we're done. We're going to clone it for our three or four prototype pages. And after we clone it and we start customizing each of the three or four pages with this area, the different area on each page, if we discover that there's something missing in the header or the navigation or the footer, we now have three or four copies of the page to deal with that we have to go back and fix. All right? So we want to make sure as certain as we can be that when we start cloning it, we have that template down as far as the common areas go. That we have the code that's going to be on every page, we have it correct, and, and we hope that we're not going to have to make any changes. All right? We hope that we don't have to make any changes. Then, after we have our HTML template, I would create a CSS file. Now, interestingly enough, the CSS file, I'm a little less concerned about getting that perfect. Why do you think that is? Yeah, why, why do I not care if I don't get the CSS file perfect? It's easy to edit, and if I edit the one copy of it, I edit the CSS file for all of them. Exactly. So, I'm going to try to get it good, of course, all right? But I might not sit there saying, oh boy, do I want this shade of yellow or this shade of yellow? Because if I decide later I want to change it, there's only one place to change it, all right? So you see the rationale, the, the code that is in one place, I'm less concerned about getting perfect because to correct it, I only have to change it in one place. Whereas the code I'm going to copy, I want to get that right so that before I copy it, I have it as right as possible so I'm not going to duplicate it and then have to go back and change the duplicates. So after I do that, I'm going to clone the individual pages. I'm going to clone the template to make individual pages. And again, for your assignment, for your design, you're supposed to have three prototype pages. So you don't have to create all the pages, just three. Enough so that someone looking at the site gets an idea of how the site works. And then finally, you finish up the clones. Remember, each of the clones has this content area that's going to be different. So you finish it up so that you make it, you make the home page look like the home page. You make the about us page look like the about us page, and so on. So that's how we're going to create the prototype. Now, when we go to create the finished product, we're going to do the same thing, except we have a choice. If our prototype is close to being correct, and there's not a lot we have to change, we could start at this point and touch up the prototype and create the rest of pages. That's option A. If our prototype was sort of way off, if they said, well, look, we want to change just about everything about it, all right? We might go back to here and just start the process over and create a new template, clone it, and so on. It all depends on, on how close your prototype is to being acceptable. All right? I need a topic that we're going to develop our sample website for. Someone have a good, fun topic. If you can't pick a good, fun topic, I'm going to pick a boring topic on purpose. <laughs> That's a good question. Vacation destinations. Vacation destinations. Good topic. All right. Yeah, I don't know what I think is boring. 
Maybe what I think is boring, you guys would think is great. So, yeah. Uh, uh, vacation destinations. Okay, that's a great one. Let's say we're going to do a website for vacation destinations. All right? So, let's say that I come up with, let's say my, my site uh, is about vacation destinations. And I'm just going to make some stuff up just so that we, we know what, what the goal is here. So we're going to have a home page. We're going to have Hawaii. Brazil. Iceland. We're going to get a variety of things. Um, what's another good vacation? Australia. Australia. Did I hear Italy? All right, we'll put that one up here. Then we're going to have two more pages. You know, Tips for single family for, for single people traveling, tips for families. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. All right, on our site. Okay. So I'm gonna start off by making a prototype of just the HTML. Uh, and I'm gonna start by making a template. And then I'm going to add the CSS, and then we're going to clone it. And our goal is to make, use this as our guide, the wireframe. All right. If I was a little sharper this morning, when you guys said vacation destinations, I would have asked what those are, because it's been so long since I've been on a vacation, I don't really know what the concept of a vacation is. That's only partly true, though. I actually, I went for a short vacation in the summertime to upstate New York, near Syracuse, and it was really nice. It's not as exciting as any of these places, but it was still pretty nice. All right, so I'm going to make my template. <coughs> I'm going to start out with my doc type. I'm going to put the tags that are on every web page or should be on every web page. Now, for a wireframe as simple as this, the sections are pretty obvious. All right. We have header, nav, section, and footer. So I'm going to put those things on here. Make sure I have my title. Sketch out the main sections. Top one, of course, is going to be the header. Second one is going to be the nav. Third one could be an article or could be a section. Doesn't really matter which we choose. 
I'm going to choose section. Maybe the section will contain multiple articles. Makes sense. And then finally the footer. All right. Now the focus of this section of lectures is going to be on the layout of the page. All right. So I'm going to create some CSS in here. All right. But uh, I'm not. I'm, oh, I'm going to create some HTML in here. All right. But I'm not going to go overboard with the HTML. All right. Uh, I'm assuming you haven't forgot everything that we've talked about so far in this class, right? So if you, if you want images, you know how to put an image on there. If you want paragraphs, you know how to put paragraphs. If you want links, you know how to put links, and so on. So I'm going to put some HTML up here, but my focus is going to be to create the CSS, to create the layouts that we want, all right? Because up to this point, most of our layouts have looked very similar. They've been very much, you start at the top and you go down the bottom of the page. Well, we're going to vary that up quite a bit here. Our first layout is going to look like that, but subsequent layouts are going to look different. So, I'm going to put an H1 in here. Zeller's Guide to Vacation Destinations. Now, my navigation is going to be a UL, right? Because that's really what a navigation is. It's an unordered list. In other words, I don't have to put them in the order I did, right? I could put Hawaii last and put Iceland first, all right? But I chose a certain order, all right? Now, I think it's good in this case to have my navigation contain all my pages. So even a page that I'm currently on. One thing I see students do, and it actually is probably a little bit more work for them, where there's a chance where you could avoid doing a little bit of work, all right? Is they make multiple pages, they have a navigation, they leave the page that they're on off the navigation list. I don't think you need to do that. In fact, I don't think that's a good idea. I want my navigation to look, at least my main navigation, to look identical as I go from page to page to page. Because then in that way, the user knows exactly where they want to go to. If they're on the home page and there's a link for the home page, so what? They click it, they'll go back to the home page, right, where they already are. If you want to, you can add CSS to show that you're on the home page. And we'll talk about doing that. But yeah, just have all your links. Uh, all your main navigation links on the navigation that appears on every page. So each link is going to be a list item. Here's where I'm going to decide the names of the pages. The home page, it's a good idea to name it index.html. Because by default, that's what web servers look for when you go to a site, typically. So I'll put home. And again, remember with the white space, it doesn't matter if I spread this out over more than one line or keep it all on one line. It's all going to appear the same. So how many pages did I have? I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I had Hawaii. Iceland. I'm doing a little bit out of order, but it doesn't really matter. Brazil, Australia, 
Italy. Single travelers. Families. And I'm going to decide on the names of the pages here, too. Okay, so these two things that I have so far are going to be the same on every page. All right? So I want to make sure I get that right. If I want a little logo here, I'm going to put the logo in. All right? I'm going to make sure the spelling on these things are correct. All right? Because I'm going to eventually clone these. And if I make a mistake, I don't want to have to go back and change each copy. This area is the area that's going to be different on every single page, right? Obviously, the, the information about Iceland is going to be different about the information from Brazil, all right, and so on. Now, I may put some filler text here just to get an idea of what the page is going to look like. I could even throw in a generic image if I wanted to, all right? And, but I don't know what those images are, and I don't know what the text is, so I can just use Greek text. We've talked about Greek text before, and it's a good thing that you can use sort of as a substitute for the real text that you're going to eventually have. Let's imagine that you're doing a <coughs> website for a travel agency like we're doing here, and you're having a site that, with vacation destinations. You're the web developer, right? That's your area of expertise. You don't know about every country in the world. You haven't been there, right? And you know, and, and you can't talk about the, you know, what are the best places to visit in Brazil? I don't know. I, the beach, I would think. I don't know what the rest of them are, right? Um, but someone does know. Some of the travel agency knows what the what the marketing material is going to be for that. But they may not have delivered it to you yet. All right? They may be working at it right along you working on the website. Does that mean that you have to wait until they're completed to develop your prototype? Of course not. What you can do is you can put the filler text in, which is Greek text. So I'm going to grab two paragraphs of Greek text and I'm just going to put it in here as a placeholder. I think most people would understand that that is just placeholder text. If not, be prepared to explain it to someone. I recall in the old days doing a report, I don't know if I've talked about it in this class, but doing a report for an auto rental company, and I just made up some test data to test my program. This wasn't websites, this was way before websites. And I just made up some values for cars, like just off the top of my head. I probably just hit the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the person looked at it as like, oh, that's, that's the wrong price for that car. And it's like, not supposed to be the real price. I just did that to make the report look correct, be formatted correctly. And it was actually hard convincing them of that. Uh, you know? so, but I think in a case like this, most people would, uh, would recognize that this is just uh, sample text. And then in my filler, I'm going to put at copy Zeller's Inc. 2019. Now, 
again, I'm sort of flying through this because I assume you know this stuff. We've done this stuff for individual pages for a long time now, since the first or second week of class. All right? So take the time and put the content on the page that you want with images and paragraphs and lists and whatever. All right? Uh, so it's going to take you longer to, to develop your template than I just did here. All right? But again, that's what the template looks like. And I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to view it. And there you go. All right. Well, already I see a problem. Yeah, the copyright is wrong. And this is wrong. So, because those are like an extra bullet point between each one. So, you know, hey, that's kind of good that I would catch this now, you know. So I'm, I'm being careful. I, I suppose if I was more clever, I would say I made these mistakes on purpose to show you, hey, proofread your page before you clone it. But I didn't. But it's kind of good I did because I forgot. I put the at sign here. This should be an ampersand, not the at sign. And here... I didn't put the and li tag, I put the li tag. All right. So now we'll go and view it again. And now it looks like I wanted it to. Okay? So I'm almost ready to go and do my thing. But first, I'm going to create a CSS file. All right? And this is where we're going to spend a lot of our focus on, because our whole focus for this is being able to take this HTML and show it a bunch of different ways. All right? And again, I, I should, I'm not going to go back and retroactively change this semester's assignment, but I have to remember in future semesters to ask people to develop two prototypes instead of one. Because it's good to give people a choice and say, do you like this or do you like this? All right? If you really want to impress me on this assignment, do two, do two prototypes. It's really not that hard. All right, we're going to do a bunch of prototypes for the same site. So I'm going to make my CSS file. And I'm going to call it style.css. And I'm just going to do something really short, just to make sure that I get the style and the HTML link together. So I'm going to put in my link, link rel equals style sheet, type equals text CSS, style equals, href equals style CSS, and I'm just going to put in the style sheet body, background, yellow. All right. Why am I doing that? Just to make sure I've gotten the syntax of everything correct, that I have the right name, that I have my link form correctly. Because I would hate to be making changes to my CSS file and testing it and then saying it's not working. I wonder why. When I just made a silly typo in the link tag. So I'm going to make sure that this is correct. And it is. Okay? So oh, good. So, here's what I want to do. I'm going to leave it at yellow for now. We're going to change it eventually. 
but I'm going to leave it as yellow now because eventually I want a background pattern behind there. And until I decide on the background pattern, just solid yellow is good enough for now. All right, why not? Okay, so I want, notice I want a little gap between these. So I'm going to go and I'm going to, I don't want this to go all the way across the page. I only want it to go partly across the page, and I want it to be indented some. Same thing for all these. So, that is accomplished by setting the width and setting the margin for my four main elements. Here's what's nice about doing CSS layout. You don't necessarily have to put the layout for every single thing. You just sort of put the main sections in the place where you want them. So I'm going to say header, and I'm going to say width 600 pixels. And I'm going to say margin 0, auto. So let's look at what that means. A width of 600 pixels means 600 dots on the screen. Your screen, it looks like it's solid color, but it's really just a bunch of dots that are really close to each other. And there's like a thousand of them going across on a typical screen. All right? Depends how you set the resolution, but this one's at about a thousand. So 600 pixels would be about 60% of the width of the screen. So that will leave a little bit of space on either side. Margin 0px auto will put no margin at the top and will automatically set the margin on the right and left. So no margin on the top and bottom, automatically set the margin on the right and left, and that will center it. Remember, there's four margins for everything on your page. This header's a box, all right? It's a box that goes like this, all the way across the page. There's actually four margins, the top margin, the right margin, the bottom, and the left. You can specify all four, or you can specify two of them and then it will repeat. Top, bottom, I'm sorry, top, right, bottom, left. I could also say margin dot dash top, margin dash right, but this is sort of a shorthand. And I'm going to make the background color of this white. So if I do that, <laughs> that sort of looks like how I want it. Now, one thing I don't like about this is notice how the Z is right up at the end of the, of the box. All right. I want to put a little, little bit of breathing room between the edge of the box and where the letters start. That is called padding. Again, just like with margin, I can specify the padding as one number, and that will be repeated in all four directions. Or I can specify two numbers, and it will be top, right, bottom, left. Or I could say padding top, padding dash bottom, whatever. I'm going to say padding 15 pixels. So there'll be 15 pixels all around the text. So that gives a little bit of breathing room all the way around the text. Maybe I want to center that. And I can do that by saying text align center. So now that is centered. The last thing I do 
is I can put a border around it. Now, I'm going to show you the long way, and I'm going to show you the short way. Border style, solid. Border color, black. Border with two pixels. There's a lot of properties that deal with a border. And we can even we can even refine it further and do a border top color, border bottom color to make it make the four lines different colors all the way around. Alright? But this is sufficient. Alright? So we'll do this, and we'll look at it, and there's our border. I can also use the shorthand and say border solid, black, two pixels, and that works the same. This is sort of the syntax I prefer, right? Because the browser is smart enough to know that if I say border and then black, that black's a color, right? Black isn't a style. Black isn't the width, all right? Black is a color. So if I say, therefore, border black, it knows that you must be talking about the border color. Likewise, solid. Solid's not a color. Solid's not a width. Solid is a style. So, therefore, I can say border solid black, and it knows that solid is the style, black is the color. Same thing with two pixels. I can also round the, the box, all right, which is kind of cool. All right. It's cool if I remember how to do it. There's a border radius property. Now again, I can't put two pixels there or 25 pixels there because that would confuse the browser. So I have to say border radius. Twenty-five pixels. And if I do that. That rounds the, the border. The bigger the number, the more rounded it is. So if I made this border radius like 5 pixels, it's just a little teeny bit rounded. Whereas if I made it 55 pixels, it looks like a circle on each end. Let's leave it like that. Why not? All right. This is what's known as the CSS box model, what I've described so far. Think of all your block tags as being boxes. All right? I had a header tag. By default, block tags go all the way across the screen. So they're head their width is all the way across the string screen, and their height is however, however big it needs to be. With a box, we can specify the height and width. And specify these in pixels or percentages. Right now we're doing it in pixels, but later on we're going to do percentages. We can specify the margin. The margin is the distance between two elements. And by default, there's a certain value for the margin. You can always override that default when you create the CSS. So margin is the space between things. Path 
is the space between the edge of the box and the text. And finally, border is the border. All right. <laughs> so if we look at this, the box is not 600 pixels wide. 600 pixels is the content area. The box is 600 pixels plus a two pixel border on each side. That's two on the right, two on the left. So that would be 60, 604. And then there's 15 on the right of padding, 15 on the left of padding. So this box is 634 pixels wide. So remember, with a box, you have margins, which is a separation between stuff, padding, which is from the edge to the text, and then border. And you can do that with height and width as well. All right, let's copy this for the other elements, and let's see what we got. Not bad. We can go with that. We could refine it if we want to. Maybe, for example, we don't want the other boxes to have the rounded corners. Or we could change it. But you know what? I'm a little less concerned about getting this perfect. Because all my CSS is going to be in one file. Whereas my HTML is going to be spread across multiple files. All right? Now, I don't like this navigation. This navigation vertically takes up a lot of space. It would be nice if we spread it out horizontally. That would take up a little less space. And these bullet points are kind of ugly. Now, whenever you have a situation like that, we're not changing what the content is. So we're not going to change the HTML. All right. The navigation is a list of links. So it belongs in a list tag. What we want that list to look like is different than this. We want it to be oriented horizontally, and we don't want a bullet point before each thing. So we can do that, all right, simply by styling. All right. I'm going to say nav ul as my selector. List style. Type none. Notice how this selector is different than the rest of the selectors. This selector is simply, all the other selectors rather, are simply a single HTML tag. This selector is two HTML tags. What does this selector mean? Pardon me? The unordered list. But all the unordered lists? Just the ones in the navigation, exactly. So this refines a selector. So if I just said UL, that would change every unordered list. Well, I don't want any, every unordered list to be changed. I only want the ones in the navigation section. In fact, let's go and put an unordered list in the body. going to make up an unordered list. OK, 
think I forgot to save the CSS file. There we go. So, this unordered list, no bullet points. This order, unordered list still has the bullet points. All right? I don't think I like these centered, at least not the section. So I'm going to remove the centering from the section. All right. There, I like that better. Now, how do I make these side by side? Well, if you remember, we said at some point in this class that there's two kinds of tags. There's block tags and there's inline tags. Block tags get stocked like giant blocks on top of each other vertically. First block, second block, third block, fourth block. By default, that is. That's how they get stacked if you don't have any CSS that changes it. Inline tags are stacked right next to each other horizontally. So if you have two images next to each other, they're going to be horizontally next to each other because images are inline tags. <clears throat> now, <coughs> as I mentioned any number of times in this class, any tag, you can change anything about it. So I can change any li within the nav to have an inline display instead of a block display. So the default is block. I can change it to inline. That will put them next to each other. And there we go. All right. We're not quite done with this yet, uh, but we're running out of time. Uh, we'll pick up on this, and we'll continue with this one, and we'll polish it up a little bit. Again, this next section, this next two or three classes, we're going to spend a lot of time learning about different CSS stuff. For example, how can I give a mouse over effect on the link so that the link changes color when we mouse over it? Uh, and so on. So we're going to cover that uh, and a bunch of other CSS stuff uh, next week. Are there any questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.